So in this part, we'll have a look at the different things you can see on the screen, the different parts of the program. But before that, I just wanted to mention that during the installation, try not to change any of the default settings. If you do, you may run into some problems regarding code meter and the program licenses. So try not to change anything there. So moving on to the program we have in front of us, uh, we can go ahead and open a new uh, project in the top left corner over there. And by default, the first thing you see is a map of the world. So what this map is used for is we will build our roads laid on top of an aerial view of the world. This will help us get the right angles, get the right curves without actually having to calculate or measure these things from the field. And on top of that, the map given in the program is already scaled perfectly, which means you don't need to upload your own backgrounds to the project. It makes things much simpler. On the left hand side, you can see network objects. Now what these network objects are, are the things that our road network, our system, will be built from. Links are going to be the base of everything, obviously. They're going to be the main roads that we have everywhere. On top of that, what we will be using are vehicle inputs, uh, nodes, and possibly data collection points, depending on what we're doing later on. Uh, so on top of network objects, the other part that we'll be using are called lists. So in lists, you can open up anything that you've seen in network objects, for example, vehicle inputs. And you can define their attributes down here. We'll go further into detail as we go one by one into the network objects. For now, that's about it that you need to know in terms of the different panels you have. For uh, moving around on the screen, if you're using a mouse, you can just press the middle button and that'll grab and hold the screen and you can pan around really easily. If you're not using a mouse and instead you're using a touchpad, for example, you can go up here and select shift mode. That'll allow us to do the exact same thing, easily panning around the screen. Uh, on top of that, you can change the view to 2D and 3D. You can rotate the view once you're in 3D view. Uh, over here, you can change the type of map that you want. Now, for the actual drawing, we'll use aerial maps because that makes things much easier. But uh, you may want to have a look at this partway through your project for whatever reason, so you can have a wireframe map as well. Uh, besides that, you can change the... In network objects, you can change the various looks of the different objects, but we won't be dealing with that much because the defaults are perfectly fine. And up here, up top, you can see the play button for the simulation. You can see the different uh, timings for the simulation. You can see simulation step by step. We'll go into all of these in detail, but it's good to know where they are for now. That's about all we need to know for now. In our next section, we will be looking at how to actually draw the roads using links and beyond that, how to add vehicle inputs and eventually be able to measure the level of service of the road.